Hi everybody, this video is on the full moon in Virgo, which happens on the 12th of March, and it happens at 2.53 in the afternoon, and that's based on London time. Now, I've had a really in-depth look at this chart, um, and to be honest, I've made a couple of videos on this, but I wasn't particularly happy with the outcome, because it is a very complicated full moon, um, and I've spent a little bit of time thinking about this and kind of meditating on it, and I really feel like I've been able to um, bring all of these conflicting energies together and kind of give you an insight into what this full moon is about. So first of all the basics, a full moon that happens every month, every 30 days and it's when the moon and the sun are 180 degrees apart and the moon is fully illuminated and it shines its energy onto us and it showers us with its energy and depending on what sign it is that's the energy that we receive. Now, this full moon is in Virgo, which is an earth sign. It's all about practicality, it's about making decisions, it's about being diligent and dutiful and looking at what's good and what's bad, making decisions, and also being kind of nurturing and caring towards other people. This is at 22 degrees. 22 is the master number of the builder, so this is significant. There's really um, an opportunity to create something in the physical, in the here and now, that is meaningful, that is long-lasting, and that's going to have an impact on your life, on your world, and also on your relationships, especially if you're taking care of someone else. Now, the thing that I found complicated about all of this is we have really experienced a lot of watery energy, especially here at the end of February, now beginning of March. Everything has been all about Pisces, and that energy is still with us. 180 degrees away from the moon in Virgo, we've got the sun in Pisces, we have Neptune in Pisces, Chiron in Pisces, and Mercury in Pisces. And these are all co conjuncting the sun, so they all kind of blend and mix their energies together. So we still have huge amounts of watery energy here in the chart. And usually what happens with a full moon is that the full moon kind of supersedes everything else and really that's the energy that we're dealing with and that's what we feel. But what's interesting about this full moon is that we've got so much watery energy going on that the full moon actually only provides us with a certain amount of balance between water and earth. So up until now we've had all water, all feelings, all intuition, all imagination, creativity, all of these things associated with water and we've had very little earth, very few practical things that have really been in the chart which have urged us towards looking at, you know, um, the practical earthy things of life. So this full moon, yes, is powerful in the sense that it is a Virgo full moon and the 22 degrees heightens it and does make it more powerful, but at the same time, please remember that we do have all of this watery energy going on and that's not going anywhere. And in fact, you know, the sun is the center of everything and the sun is what illuminates the moon. So the sun is in Pisces, so Pisces energy is being shined onto this full moon in Virgo. So that emotional side of things isn't going anywhere. So if you think that this full moon in Virgo is like, hooray, you know, all feelings are done now, I can just get back to business and do my work and and, and sign the contracts and do all the practical everyday stuff. No, there's still a lot of feeling stuff going on. So the sun is in Pisces at 22 degrees. The sun in Pisces is the identity. It's very much about the intuitive side of things, as I've already mentioned, uh, creativity, spirituality, connecting with one's own feelings. And this is where sometimes people have difficulties. People who are naturally joyous and happy and who don't struggle emotionally very much, they find it quite easy to get in touch with their feelings. People who have difficult emotions or um, often um, um, mental health issues or addiction issues, which is a mental health issue, or negative feelings or negative experiences that they haven't dealt with just yet, and we all have those, often are um, not quite in a place where they have dealt with them and they've swept them under the rug and they're not feeling them. So people who are in that situation don't particularly enjoy all of this Pisces energy because it forces you to look at your feelings and emotions and that's what causes the problems, okay? So we've got the sun here 
If you're someone who struggles with the emotional side of things, know that this full moon is going to start to provide a little bit of balance to your life and you can actually look at the emotional stuff and be uh, done with it or start to deal with it at the very least. Um, if you're someone who is in a good place emotionally, then fabulous, wonderful. You will feel even more um, at ease within yourself. And now with this full moon in Virgo, you'll have the added practicality on top of that to get things done and to feel good. Now, Neptune is 10 degrees away from the sun. And the way I look at conjunctions and aspects, my orbs, so the, the distance between one planet and another, I use 10 um, as still a conjunction. So if it was 11 degrees away, then I would say it's no longer conjunct. But with it being 10 degrees away, I would say it still influences the sun. Okay. And Neptune is the dream planet of aspirations, of the intuition, of everything that has to do with this, this intuitive, spiritual, creative side of life. Neptune rules Pisces. Okay. So Neptune is all about this stuff. It's the water planet of dreams and feelings. Sitting on top of the sun, the identity or the way you're feeling, the way things are going at the moment, are all about the inner world. So relationships may seem more difficult, um, the emotions may be heightened, you may feel much more than you usually would. You may be confused by this additional emotional kind of depth that you've got. If you've always felt that you're pretty standard and solid, uh, you may be wondering where are all these feelings suddenly coming from. The answer is to look at them, to deal with them, to let them kind of exist, feel the feelings, be aware of them, and then let them go out again. Don't say, oh, I don't like that. I don't want to feel that. Sweep it under the rug. That's not the way to do this. Now, the Sun and uh, Neptune together, and th they're now, um, this is the last couple of stages of them to being together, because they've been together in February. The Sun is moving on now, so it's going to leave Neptune behind. The Sun and Neptune together is ideal for people who work with their intuition and who really have to feel their feelings so they can get intuitive messages that they can then give to other people. So again, for people who work as intuitives or channels or mediums or psychics or uh, psychic healers or medical intuitives, if you're any of those kind of things, this is a really, really wonderful time because you do have the Sun and Neptune still sitting together, but you also have this full moon in Virgo, which balances things out and you'll be able to take that intuitive spiritual information and put it into the practical world and do something with it okay so this is ideal because it's you know the spiritual is great but if you're just in your head or if you're just imagining things and you never actually get down to putting it into some sort of physical format then that's very I mean, what's the point of that no one else will ever understand it okay and it's about being able to balance the two and expressing what it is that's going on internally and then you can be of use to other people then you can be of service now we also have chiron in pisces that sits two degrees away from the sun chiron is the wounded healer and it's about um it's the part of the chart often that's very difficult and that causes problems and challenges until you transform it so that it becomes a great strength and chiron in pisces sitting on top of the sun this way says connect with spirit so that you can heal yourself. Look at the things that have been difficult and painful in your life so that you can heal them. And it's asking you to do this kind of shadow work. It's asking you to look at the wounds and the painful stuff and to go within so that you can heal it, okay? So the way to do that is um, through meditation, through a, a daily spiritual practice that you can do for yourself, also, it's a great time because this is a full moon in Virgo to actually do something practical where you're doing some sort of spiritual healing. So whether it's going to a workshop or having Reiki healing done on you or, have, or going to see a spiritual psychic healer and really um, healing those parts of yourself, the things within yourself that aren't quite done yet, you know, the things that aren't quite resolved yet. And we all have that, you know, anyone who lives on planet Earth is going to have negative experience with their physical health, with other people, with institutions they belong to. It's just a normal part of being. And the people who are freest and who are able to get back to this natural place of joy, in my experience, are the people who are able to let go of those things and move on. Because I really feel that our natural state is joy. I really think that's what our true nature is, joy 
and happiness and um, a connection with spirit. And it's all of this junk that comes up that covers that true joy. And once you clear away the rubbish, the, the debris, so to speak, then you can really unearth the true you and uh, really be the joyous, happy person that you are. And again, we live in a universe where what's going on internally is going to be reflected externally. Okay, so if, if everything is covered with grime and rubbish, emotional rubbish, then your life is going to seem complicated and chaotic and difficult. If you've been able to clear that away and be happy and joyous, your true natural state, the way the universe wants you to be, then it tends to be reflected in your reality. And that's what that's a spiritual law that I've always found to be quite cruel in a sense, because it means the happy get happier and the unhappy become unhappier. It's like, you know, that saying the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It's, it's really what you put in and what you think becomes manifest in reality. So it's important to do this kind of work. And that's why, and I'm sorry to go on about this, but that's why the last two weeks of February were difficult. And the people who did the work, who did write down the things, oh, this is what came up for me at the end of February, at the beginning of March here, you know, the relationship issue, this, the addiction issue, the, the resentments, the envy, all of those things that I've been feeling that caused me pain. And I've looked at them and I've realized them and I've deliberately surrendered them to the universe and let them go. The people who have done that work and the people who will do that work during this full moon in Virgo, you guys are going to be the ones who are free emotionally and who can return to that place of joy. Now, Mercury is also in Pisces. Mercury is the communication planet. It's at 27 degrees during this full moon. Two and seven is nine. Nine is about spirituality and completion. And I know you probably heard enough about it, but the whole point, everything is about spirituality, uh, the inner world, emotion. That's what this whole season has been about. I've been talking about this for weeks. Okay, so Mercury is in, um, at nine degrees, so to speak, and it's also in Pisces. So the communication planet, your satellite, your way of thinking, the way you connect with um, uh, uh, content, information, communication, it's all based on the emotions, it's all based on spirituality. And on the one hand, it means you're truly, truly in touch with your own feelings and with your own higher self and your own kind of um, true emotions, you can really be, trust what you're feeling and grasp what's going on internally. On the other hand, it means that, again, if you're a medium or intuitive or psychic, you're able to pick up messages that at other times you would never be able to reach because you are so tuned in. So that's what this water season has all been about. It's been a double-edged sword. It's been good for people who deliberately work with the intuition and feelings. It's been negative for people who don't want to feel their feelings, who aren't in a space where they feel they can and who are in denial about something. So all of that is going on um, on the other side, 180 degrees, so to speak, from this full moon. And you can see how much water is happening on one side and how very little Earth is going on during this full moon. So yes, it is a powerful full moon, but it's practically just holding its own in comparison to all this water stuff. And it presents the ideal balance between the physical and the um, emotional, and you can actually do something. So if you haven't written that list yet of the things that have been bothering you, write it now. If you have had these wonderful insights and these dreams over the last week or two, and they've been fantastic and mind-blowing, then write them down and write a book of, of fables or fairy tales or fantastical stories. If you've made contact with some sort of spiritual being out there in the universe and you're not quite sure whether it's right or not, that is a genuine true thing. And make contact and do something with it, work with it, write, put it into some sort of tangible format and capture the emotional things that are going on. Because what's so interesting about this emotional stuff, it feels so strong, it feels like a tsunami when it appears and you just have to go with it. But once it's gone, it's almost forgotten. And the great thing is if you can capture it in some way, if you can, if you can put it down in some sort of practical, tangible format, like a recording or a piece of writing or a video or something that will help you to remember these emotional insights that you got. 
Because once the tsunami has gone, it's gone. It's over. And all you're left with is just normality. So that's what's going on on the other side of the chart. The moon itself forms some connections with other planets as well, which complicates this a little bit more. So the moon forms a square with Saturn. And a square is when two planets are 90 degrees apart. So Saturn is in Sagittarius, again at 27 degrees, 9, spirituality completion. Saturn and Sagittarius are fundamentally um, contradictory. Saturn is about scrutiny, restriction, let's keep everything the same, let's make sure there's stability and security in life. Sagittarius is like, how can we explore? What's next? Where's my new goal? Where can I gallop off to? So when these two meet, it's not exactly a marriage of the minds because they're fundamentally different. Saturn in Sagittarius makes it difficult to discern the path forward. It makes it difficult to, like if you get to a fork in the road, it makes it very difficult to discern whether to go left or right. And it makes it fuzzy and difficult. Now, that connects with the moon in Virgo and it influences in it, it in a sense. So what you're going to be experiencing is if you have this desire to be practical and um, to do something um, where you're where you're working with the real physical world you're not going to have this eureka moment of this is absolutely the right thing that i'm doing right now instead you're going to be doubting it and saying should i be doing this or should i be doing something else i'm not quite a hundred percent sure so don't expect certainty with the moon in virgo the full moon in virgo squaring saturn in sagittarius the pathway forward is fuzzy and blurred and uncertain and filled with <laughs> filled with a feeling of unease and am I actually going in the right direction okay so the way to work with that is to connect with your guide your angels the universe and to have this spiritual practice and to listen to your your gut to listen to your emotions to listen to your intuition to listen to your inner feelings to let that guide you because remember, we've got loads and loads of energy in water. So your compass is going to be this water. If it feels right, that's the way to move forward. And the uncertainty is something that you're going to have to live with and continue regardless of the uncertainty. There's a great book written in the 80s by, um, written by a woman called Susan Jeffers, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And it's, a, it's such a great book because she says that you know, if you're wanting to do something and you're waiting for the fear, or in this case, the uncertainty to go away before you take action, you're going to be waiting a long time. You've got to take the action and then the fear, or in brackets, the uncertainty goes away. Once you've got the evidence that you were right, that you did take the right fork in the road. And no one's going to say that to you until you've actually done it. So don't be disheartened or discouraged if there's a lack of certainty here. Expect uncertainty. Now, the full moon in Virgo also trines Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is the planet of transformation and change. In Capricorn, it's about transforming your, your, li your real life, your earthy, practical existence. It relates to work. It relates to um, your day-to-day -day experience. It relates to what you're actually putting your energy into on a physical, practical level. So that eases its energy into the moon a little bit. And you're going to be willing to try new things. You're going to, you know, if you've been writing on a typewriter, then you may be um, willing to use a word processor for the first time. Or if you have always um, worked in one career, you may be thinking that this no longer feels right and you're willing to try something else. Or you're willing to try for a promotion or you're willing to try a different branch or area of what it is you're doing. So this gives you a new sense of hope and it gives you a sense of um, adventure and excitement that coupled with Saturn the uncertainty means that there may be I don't think so much that there's high anxiety floating around around but I think there's a lack of kind of being blinkered okay you're not going to be like this is my way forward I know what I'm doing in my life I'm just going for it that's not it there are strong feelings urging you to try new things and everything feels new and uncertain and and maybe even a little bit scary but that's exciting and great and wonderful so try and embrace that uncertainty and that lack of 
um, this is the way it is and there are no other ways of doing things and just go with the flow and see what comes up. The full moon being at 22 degrees is an indicator that it's going to be pretty meaningful and that you may stumble into something that's actually going to be something good and positive and long term in your life as a result of this whole process of uncertainty. So the moon forms more connections. It forms a quincux with Uranus and Aries. So that again is kind of... Um, it can, it's, it's not energy that feels difficult, it, it flows easily and naturally. And Aries, uh, Uranus is in Aries, also at 22 degrees, wow. Okay, so this kind of outweighs Saturn in Sagittarius, because Uranus in Aries is going to say, go for it. And that's going to help you with this sense of uncertainty and fear, and it's just going to say, you know, even if you don't have all the answers, just go for it, just push through it. And also what we've got, we've got this full moon form, forming a sesky square with Mars and Taurus. And Mars and Taurus is wonderful. It's, um, it's kind of earthy, it's very practical, it's much slower than Mars and Aries, and it's kind of focusing on the physical, on the practical real world, and it says push forward and do something and be creative and get your hands dirty. You know, get get your hands involved in something. So we've actually now looking at this got quite a lot of energy supporting this little full moon here in Virgo, which when I first started looking at this chart seemed to be all alone there by itself. But we've got Mars in Taurus supporting it. We've got Uranus in Aries supporting it. We've got Pluto in Capricorn supporting it. Saturn makes it cloudier, but all these three other planets are all very masculine. They're all very kind of my desires, what can I do, what can I achieve, how can I create something in the real world. So they all, all support this um, full moon in Virgo. So we really have nice balance now between earth and water. And whenever I do someone's personal chart, I look at what elements are strongest in their chart. And if we have a nice balance between water and earth, I love seeing that because it means I'm talking to a person who is imaginative and creative, but who also has the know-how to actually put that down in writing or into some for format, into art or whatever it is. People who only have water are very, very in tune and emotional, but they lack the practicality to put it down. And people who only have earth and no water are often very rigid and don't feel very much and just go through the motions and get stuck in situations that aren't right for them because they can't get in touch with the feeling side of themselves. Okay, So this day is perfect balance between the feeling world and the physical practical world. Now let's see if it forms any other relationships. I think that's it. Yeah, just to clarify, you know, when I talked about Neptune and Chiron and Mercury in Pisces all together opposing the Moon in Virgo, each one of those energies is really opposing the moon. So the sun versus the moon, obviously. Neptune versus the moon. Chiron versus the moon. Mercury versus the moon. It's all of these emotional desires versus the physical, practical, earthy desires of the moon to just get busy with something and to make practical decisions. Perfect balance. Okay? Perfect balance. It doesn't make any other connections um, as far as I can see. And it looks like a really nice kind of um, full moon in the sense that if you've been struggling with just all these feelings and you haven't been able to do anything with them, this full moon is kind of like um, some, the, like a penny dropping, you know, something hitting the ground and saying, okay, we're coming down off this cloud now or we're coming out of the internal kind of dream world and we're getting back to basics, we're getting back to um, being grounded, we're being back to going back to being practical and we can actually do something about these feelings. So it's a really, really positive full moon. I hope you have a wonderful time. If you would like a private reading with me to have a look at how this full moon affects you specifically, and the way I do that is I draw up your natal chart and I can do that by using your place of birth, date of birth and time of birth. 
I put the transits around your natal chart and I see where this full moon is actually occurring. So if it's in your second house, then it applies to finance, okay, being practical in your financial life. If it's in your fifth house of romance and relationships, then this full moon kind of blesses you in the sense that you are able to become more practical when it comes to your love life and you're able to manage the feelings, which may have been negative in the past or positive, and do something practical about your love life in future. Okay, so um, if you'd like to do that, then please get in touch with me via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab to order your reading. We can also have a look at what your life purpose is, what your vocational aptitudes are, what's coming up for you in 2017 in all areas of your life. So that's family and health, career, love life, family, relationships, anything at all. Just get in touch via the website. Please remember to subscribe to this channel. I'd be ever so grateful and you'll be notified of new videos that come out as I release them. Um, and there was one other thing that I usually say. <laughs> yeah, so I will speak to you next time for the new, new, the, I'm stuttering now, for the new moon that's coming up and the full moon. And I also do monthly horoscopes for each sign of the zodiac, so Aries, Taurus and Gemini. And I do weekly horoscopes as well as daily tarot reading. So there's loads to choose from. So please subscribe, check out those other videos. It's been a pleasure being with you today. I hope you have a wonderful time and I'll speak to you soon.